So welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be talking about uh, this thread of work about extending I2B2 to facilitate reproducible machine learning. Uh, I just have two slides, but there's a video which, you know, and a couple of slides which walk towards the main slide, but I just have one slide in this 15 minute presentation which I want to talk about, okay? But first, this, what is the context of this work? Why, you know, why this work which I'm presenting, which you're presenting over here? So the theme for, you know, uh, the theme for this trail of work in, I, in I2B2 is about enhancing accessibility and functionality of the I2B2 platform, right? So why just 250 institutions in the US and 72 institutions in Europe? Why not 10,000 institutions over the world, right? And uh, this is trying, this is something in that vein, right? So we know that I2B2, everybody recognizes the enterprise application, you know, you, you require a big a village to manage it. But really, you, you, if you if it it can be scaled to if it can be made more accessible, more user friendly, easy to install and deploy, and if you reduce the expertise to deploy and use it, it can potentially scale to a lot more institutions. And ultimately, actually, I two B two can be given the computational hardware that is you know uh, pr progress that is being made. It can be a desktop application which users which no expertise can can use, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about that, right? So I think my my engagement here with Sean, you know, and, and the group started in 2017 when, you know, uh, I just released the code to quickly install I2B2. And, you know, and then Sean encouraged me to kind of dockerize it. And, you know, we put out the first Docker containers back in 2018. Uh, and I think many of you have been using and giving feedback on, on that. Uh, and then after that, uh, this ETL module was about making it very easy and simple to load data into I2B2 without understanding, without worrying too much about the internals of I2B2. I'll talk a little bit about that. And then last year, I uh, you know, presented like how we can actually get tabulations, you know, which can be cut paste into, into research papers from I2B2. And today a little bit talk about the machine learning and you know, JSON interface, which has been actually released in open source. Uh, and you know, in progress means the publication is in, in in progress. I invite you to participate, you know, and uh, collaborate on the manuscript if you're interested. In, if you're interested in 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 these two threads, just write to me, you know, and I'll be happy to, you know, have have your inputs and you know, have your co-authors. Okay, so this was the 2000 uh, you know uh, 18 version of the I2B2 containers that you really have a Docker host and the web server. Uh, a wild fly and database uh, as a container, almost like a, a Docker network. And and subsequently, we added integrated with GitLab, so you could actually run ETL processes in, put them in Git, and have a GitLab runner to trigger those processes, and use the ETL, uh, you know, ETL container to push the data into the I2B2 Postgres. So what I'm presenting today is going to build up on all that stack. Okay, so. The simple way of looking at I2B2 is it's a data store right now and it has got data and metadata, right? Data is facts and metadata are concepts. That's how we think of it. And uh, we made this very simple representation, four column format, you know, uh, if you if you can put data, if you can uh, you know, uh, represent your data as patient number, date, code and value, pair, who, when and what, and you describe the concept in this format, the ETL container can put this in a fully, you know, a fully functional I2B2, you know, uh, backend, and you know everything will work fine. Okay, um, and you'll find okay, this is these are like the processes. What I2B2 is really doing is it is denormalizing your uh, you know native database, and it makes it very easy for analysis and machine learning, and reduces the curve for developers to come in and do things. Okay, uh, going past that. So uh, after that, we kind of, you know, um, in I2B2, you have got this XML cells as a way of talking to cells, but we, uh, we put out this JSON API where you could make use curl, you know, curl commands to actually do, do get, post, delete, and update concepts as well as facts. Uh, okay, now the talk for today. So the question to you, I2B2 is a repository of data. But can I2B2 be, be, be a repository of algorithms? Uh, can it be a repository of, you know, of models? Uh, so, and, and I, I think uh, a lot of the work uh, with you know, Jeff and uh, 
uh, Jeff presented in, in the morning and, and, and uh, uh, Griffin, you know, I mean, it's all going in that space. But you're explicitly asking that question. So facts hold the data, concepts hold the metadata. So can a derived concept embed algorithms to create derived facts? Okay. Uh, so that's, that's a central question. And so what I'm presenting here is an ML module, ML image, uh, which extends the ETL, ETL module which is out there. And this is how it, how it works. It actually bypasses the Java services you know, for, for the derived computations. And you can trigger this using command line uh, or maybe using a Swagger UI also in the front end. Okay, and this is the one slide I was talking about and I'll hang on to this for a while. Uh, so look at this example, right? Um, notice these two signatures. You post a concept and then you post a job. Okay, a job is an asynchronous way of running the compute that is defined in the in the concept, right? So look at let's look at this example. So we're using the blob to kind of, or no, in in the concept uh, in the concept table to kind of define the algorithm we want to run. Now in this case, okay, we are doing a simple logistic regression. This is like a proof of concept, right? So you, so to define a machine learning model. What does the end user really need, need? Who is not a non-expert? It requires, I think uh, we had the example, you know, uh, when Griffin mentioned the example, even Jeff. So you require a positive that people who really have a condition, say diabetic patients, and it's incidental that I'm talking about diabetes and Jeff also spoke about diabetes. So you have a positive set of patients, uh, you know, people who have, you know, the phenotype has diabetes, and then you have a negative set. Now this is, you know, you could have a baseline set or some other set, some way of defining. And then you have a target concept path. So that is actually a path in the concept hierarchy, which you are interested in predicting, building a model for predicting. And, and you can define features. Okay, here are the features which I want you to use, you know, and here is an array of concept paths. And these are the ones which are gonna be extracted for building the model. And you're saying 30 days before the event occurs, I want to build a model. Now this is, a, uh, okay, and then you say, post job and you say okay i you know uh, so, so once this concept is created it will live as a first class concept into the i2b2 concept hierarchy in in the i2b2 uh, interface and you can uh, actually use that to querying you know and and uh, so when you post a job it will trigger the model it will build the model and then you can actually execute there's one more call post job to execute the model and that will automatically generate the facts and stream them back in to I2B2 so that you can actually run a query. Let's look at an example. Uh, this is a seven minute video, but I don't, we don't have, so I'll just quickly jump through it. Uh, so this is a JSON API uh, to, to do stuff, but it's all in GitHub. You can, you, can, you can try it yourself when you're back home. Okay, so ima imagine that we're starting here. Uh, we are loading a data set over here to, for the proof of concept to make it simple. So we're loading a diabetes and using the ETL, interface to you know load the so these are the sample files so you're loading that and when you load them you have it in the in the hierarchy Okay, there you go. So it's loaded over here. Uh, the data is up updated. Next, you want to make a call of build model. And uh, you, need, you need to authorize uh, authorize yourself to uh, kind of do the curl call. And this is a sample example which you're posting in the, you know, in the interface. So posting that definition of you know, the blob definition here. And when you execute it, let's say execute. It says model built, uh, you know, you get back a response. Uh, model built successfully and, and you go to the interface, you see this derived concept over here, ML 
and it's a diabetes test model. And now you want to apply some, you want to predict and you uh, apply a lower target data set of patients. Okay, so you're building, you apply, apply model and you want to say, okay, you want to apply this model to patients having this, this set of facts, like new patients or whatever, new patients coming into a database. And so when you execute on that, I'm just jumping through this, when you execute on that, it says, uh, model completed, executed successfully, and now you see that one patient, you see that one, the count, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, so that fact is generated and going, uh, it goes back in. So let me stop here and, and you know, open this up for thoughts and comments, you know, any, anything that you have, uh, uh, any questions that you have, have. So this is a very simple example where you are, uh, you know, you're putting your code in the ML container and that is, the job API is triggering, allowing you to execute these derived computations and loading facts back in. So let me stop here and you know, see if there are any questions. Any questions for Kavi? We probably have time for one, if there is one. Okay, so, uh, so here I2B2 is serving as uh, housekeeping, it's doing all the housekeeping, right? The idea over here, how it makes it, uh, how, how I2B2 makes it, how does it facilitate machine learning for non-experts? There are some standard stuff that, uh, you know, st standard things that we do uh, for building a model. And those steps, when you try to execute them manually, there's a lot of chance of making mistakes. So if you have a standard pipeline, like, you know, uh, like it was shown in the morning today about phenom or something like that, even simple regression models, uh, if you put, the, if you embed them, uh, it will be easier for you for users to, to, to use them. Yeah, so let me stop here. Thanks. Kavi.